Hello, and welcome to all of you who are joining us for our Fresh Start PAUMC service today. We're so blessed to have you with us. This weekend, we are kicking off a new series on women of the Bible, and this weekend, we have Linda Valle with us, who is going to be sharing with us about Lydia. But before we get to that message, we are going to begin with our time of worship through song, and this is a time for us to open our hearts and worship together in spirit and truth our awesome God who is worthy of our praise.
draw my eyes to yours where my help comes from you will find me over and over again your love and your mercy begin no matter how far you find me again you find us no matter where we are you are pursuing us you are right there waiting for us to turn around and find you because you found us first God we thank you that you've chosen to come and rescue us and make a way and become the way for us where there was no other way you are good you are faithful and we are here for you today God help us to be ready to allow you to change us from the inside out it is all about you and we're here for you. We give you praise and honor and glory. And we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome, friends, to our online campus. Uh, get used to hearing that because uh, we've wondered for a while at PAUMC, Fresh Start, One Church, many locations, where would our next campus be? Little did we know that COVID would help us decide that, but I, I believe that we've discovered a, a ministry with our online ministry that will continue to reach out to people, uh, not only in our immediate local area, but potentially around the world. We're glad that you're here. I would just remind you that uh, we have some places you can go on our website or on Facebook to uh, click for the children's uh, Sunday school lesson, for the Connect card, for the message notes. Um, if you'd like to give electronically or there's other suggestions on ways that you can give in support of the church. Uh, we're just very excited that you're with us. If you're hearing this over this weekend and would like to come out Sunday night to uh, experience the live worship at the uh, Miracle Mile 2447 Corny Road. I got the address right this week. I, last week I said Watkins Road. I hope nobody went to the wrong address. We get a chance to see each other, at least from our cars. And then afterwards, I, we're going to do another ice cream party. So uh, come on out and we'll tell you where to meet for ice cream if you want to after the service. Uh, I'm excited this week to uh, introduce my wife. If you haven't met Linda, 
Um, we celebrate our 40th anniversary this weekend, and Linda's celebration is to preach. How about that? So we appreciate her being with us. And uh, Linda's also going to be launching a series on the women of the Bible that begins this week and will continue through summer. Um, there will be some well-known women of the Bible and some lesser knowns, but I think it's going to be a great experience. So we're so happy you're with us now, and I look forward to Linda coming to share with us at this point. Well, welcome to all who are watching and listening today. My name is indeed Linda Vallee, and it's a privilege and an honor to be speaking to you today. I certainly do miss meeting together and can't wait until we're again together to worship in person. We have had two awesome parking lot services, and they've gone a very long way in bridging the gap during this crazy time. I do hope and pray that you are all well and that you are keeping close to God. There's no other way to get through tough times. If you are watching via Facebook today, please let us know that you're here and let us know how you are doing. This weekend is a very special one for Pastor Bill and me as we are celebrating 40 years of marriage. And over half of those years, we've been here at PAUMC, Penn Ave, United Methodist Church, celebrating with you. This is going to be my last opportunity to formally speak to all of you in this format. I'm saying goodbye today in the form of this sermon to wish you all well and hopefully inspire you to do the good work for Jesus Christ throughout the areas where Bill and I have served for 22 years. We are formally retiring from full-time ministry on September 30th. And while you will be seeing Pastor Bill from time to time in his post-retirement capacity of quarter time, along with Pastor Mark and Pastor Nicole, I don't have any plans right now to return with him occasionally as he travels back and forth from our winter residence in Florida. Before I start, I want to share a picture of the night sky with you. My son-in-law, Andrew, took this picture, and he commented that before this, he had never seen this many stars in the sky. This picture reminds me of two verses of Scripture in Genesis, one from chapter 15, verse 5, and another from chapter 22, verse 17, where God takes Abraham outside and says to him, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if you indeed can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. I am increasingly aware as I get older of the importance of the generations who have gone before us. It's easy for us to reflect on our parents and maybe even our grandparents. However, how many of you know of your ancestors before them? We may not know much about them, but I can guarantee you this, that there were many who were Christ followers and who prayed and believed that the generations to come after them, us, would continue to spread the good news to others. Would you pray with me for a moment? Father God, I thank you for this day and for this opportunity to share my thoughts and my heart. I pray that you use me to glorify your kingdom and that what I say might plant a seed that has a lasting ripple effect on the generations to come. As we gaze on the stars or think about the grains of sand, we are in awe of your creation and amazed to know that you are good and that you are always in control. 
May we remember anew today our responsibility to share you and have a lasting impact on all those who will come after us. In your name, we all say, Amen. As I ponder my lineage, and as, if, as we have just finished celebrating our nation's independence, I recently became aware that my great, great, great grandfather, Samuel Drew, fought in the Revolutionary War. And I am amazed and I am grateful and we can all be thankful for all those who have gone before us and sacrificed so much for our generation and for the generations to come. This weekend, we are launching a new series on women of the Bible. And I'm going to be talking to you today about Lydia, a woman briefly mentioned in the New Testament book of Acts. A little bit of background about Lydia. She was a wealthy businesswoman, and she sells purple dye and purple cloth in the busy region of Philippi. She isn't from that area, and as far as we know, she is not married, but she is a woman who is very well thought of and highly respected. Purple dye and purple cloth were hot commodities in those days. They were a sign of royalty and wealth. The area of Thyatira in Asia, where Lydia was from, was known for its method of creating this dye. The particular method was an advanced one at that time and the dye and the goods were sought after over the other dye-producing technology of that time. Lydia ran her household and had others who lived with her, and many of them may have been related and or may have been servants at that time. Some scholars believe that Lydia, Lydia may have been widowed because it was very unusual for a single woman at that time to be doing business on her own. In the New Testament book of Acts, Paul's second missionary journey starts out on a rather shaky note. He has his plan, along with his fellow teammates, Silas, Timothy, and eventually Luke. They try to set out for Asia. Paul tries two times to head into Asia. But the Holy Spirit intervenes. He has a vision from God in which a Macedonian begs him to come and help, and Paul then sets out in that direction. When they cross the sea and enter into Philippi, they are hard-pressed to find a synagogue because there aren't enough Jewish men in that area to form one. So they head down to the river where they find a group of women praying and it is in this group that they find Lydia. Hear these words from Acts chapter 16, verses 9 and following, in Luke's words. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas, we set out to sea and sailed straight for Samothraki, and the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and the leading city of that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. 
God's purposes usually remain hidden from our eyes. He is always at work in secret and surprising ways. Paul wanted to go where he wanted to go. If he had, it would have ended poorly, perhaps even had cost him his life. But the moment he heard from God in the vision and was obedient, everything fell together. God worked specifically through Paul. Because he was faithful, he met Lydia. Lydia's heart was open. She was seeking after God. Lydia has everything that she could possibly want or need at this point in her life. Perhaps she was dissatisfied and not feeling fulfilled, and God tugged at her heart. This encounter was not an accident. It was divinely led and ultimately moved the church throughout the region. The gospel gets a foothold in Europe because of Lydia. She was a businesswoman from Asia working in Philippi. She was actually from that area that God told Paul not to go into. How crazy is that? Since Paul listened and followed the tug from God, the gospel ended up spreading throughout Europe. How has God worked in secret and surprising ways in your life? Do you have times that you can look back at now and say with certainty that God was in that circumstance or situation? I know for me that 22 years ago, I came here kicking and screaming. I didn't want to be in a city where all my family lived. There was too much stress and drama, and I did not want to be in the middle of it. I was dealing with some personal issues of my own at that time, and I couldn't fathom dealing with anyone else's problems. But God. I eventually allowed him to take control, and the rest is history. Literally, his story. What would have happened if I hadn't let God take control? Only he knows. My prayer for Pan Ave UMC, fresh start, as you continue on, is that you remain open and listen and wait on God. Relinquish control over to him don't fight to take that control back. Know that God is in control and he has a plan for his church. He works in mysterious ways and he is sovereign. He is in control and his plans are higher and greater. And while we struggle with wanting what we want when we want it, we want to control our circumstances, Sometimes it's only when life or its plans fail apart, fall apart, that we are truly open to listening and hearing from him and thus allow him to do his work and his will in our lives. I have witnessed this in my own life and in the lives of others, and it's a marvelous thing to see God working in and through all circumstances. God wants to use me and you just like he used Lydia and just like he used all those generations who have come before us. Where you are right now is where God has you. Listen to his voice and hear his heart for you right now. God is in control and he knows what he is doing. Jesus opens hearts. Paul's missionary journey was for one purpose, and that was to tell others all about what Jesus did for them. Lydia was at the river that day with the other woman because she knew about God. She was seeking him. 
She was established in her work and her life at that time, but she didn't have an understanding of what Jesus did for her. So when she heard Paul talking, God opened up her heart to receive his grace. Our job as believers is to continue to tell others about Jesus. We can't change hearts and minds. Only God can do that. We can't control destiny. God alone chooses us, the timing of our acceptance of him, and works out his plan for our lives. His plan is ultimately good. He used Paul and his missionaries to spread the good news, and he continues to use us today for his plan and his purposes. You are a part of his plan and purpose if you believe in him. He has the perfect plan for this faith community because you are a part of it. Do you see your importance in God's plan? Do you hear his call? Has the gospel given you a purpose? I pray that God will continue to open hearts for him as we seek to spread the good news of Jesus wherever we are. What God did in the life of Lydia is no different than what he does for every believer. Life is short. Our memory verse This weekend is Psalm 90, verse 12, and it instructs us. Please read it with me. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And where is that found? Psalm 90, verse 12. I want that for my life. I want that for everyone who hears this message. I want to have a life that matters to my friends, my family, my coworkers, if I even ever get to see them again, to my children and my children's children. The time is now to start creating that life. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to become? Begin with that end in mind and work backwards. Use these days that you have now to open your heart up for God's plan and purpose and gain some perspective and clarity for your life. God opened my heart up when I was a teen. He has worked in mysterious ways throughout my life, and he is currently working in my life. I will continue to trust in him for the remainder of my life and pray that he uses me in significant ways to fulfill his plan and purpose. Our response to this good news. What was Lydia's response to what she heard? She heard the good news, and she immediately became a believer. She was equipped by God's grace and empowered to do whatever she could for his kingdom. She went and told everyone in her household what had happened. Their hearts were opened, and they were all baptized. They believed. Lydia then insisted that Paul and his team go and stay with her. She received the gift of hospitality and provided a place for them to stay and food for them to eat. And this was not any small undertaking. And given the circumstances at the time, Lydia was in a position to receive substantial ill will and possibly lose credibility and income. Paul stayed a while in Philippi, and his preaching caused enough of a stir that he and Silas were imprisoned while they were there. Lydia's association with them could have resulted in bad consequences for her. But as God would have it, miracles continued to occur while they were there. Literally, Paul planted a church in Lydia's home during this time. There was no doubt that she continued to do business and that she shared God's love with everyone that she could. 
Paul and Silas returned to Lydia's home after they were released from prison and before they left that area on their next missionary journey. And we know from Scripture that Lydia, though not mentioned by name, and others were highly thought of by Paul as he continued to travel throughout the nations. In Philippians 4, verses 15 and following, and I quote, As you Philippians know in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. What is your response to God's call? What are you risking? What gifts has God given to you to use for his kingdom in this faith community? How do we view our stuff? Do we make sense of all we have, like Lydia, and use it for God? My prayer for you today is that you're able to take an inventory of your life, your skills, your stuff, and see what God wants you to do with what he has given you. Obedience and witness and involvement are crucial to furthering his kingdom. Lydia became a secure Christian woman and walked by faith, and God supplied all of her needs and the needs of the church at that time. He will continue the good work through you. The gospel is alive today. You are living proof of this. To know about God, to know about God, is the easy part. To keep our hearts open and seeking to give up control, to really listen, that's a little bit harder. If you don't know Jesus or have a relationship with him, and if you're willing, would you pray a simple prayer with me right now? Please bow your heads. Lord, I am sorry for my unbelief. I have tried to take control of my life and my circumstances, and I have failed. At times, I can get overwhelmed with fear and anxiety, anger and worry, doubt and discouragement. I want to let you into my heart and my life. I want to know you more and want you to take control. Oh God, I am tired. I am ready. I am yours. Amen. God's word is alive today because of the generations of people who have gone before us. Will you be obedient to this call on your life? This calling has a ripple effect for the generations who will follow us. I'd like to take an additional moment to personally express my love and appreciation to all of you who faithfully serve our God at Penn Ave UMC Fresh Start. I cannot even begin to capture 22 years of memories. Many of the people who have blessed me and blessed my life over these years have passed on or passed through the doors of the Pine City campus. And now, with our multi-site approach, it's impossible for me to pinpoint any one person or any time that has meant the most to me. There are so many. 
But suffice it to say that God always knows what he's doing. And he has been, he is, and will continue to be present in each of our lives in ways that we can't even imagine, even right now. He works in ways that we cannot see and oftentimes surprises us when we think we've got it all figured out. Forty years of marriage and ministry has taught me so much and nothing at all at the same time. Life is fluid and we must be willing to change and be changed by the one who created us and loves us so much. We are a product of the vast generations before us and we are here today because someone in that long line of lineage before us prayed for us to come to the knowledge of God and what he did for us on the cross. I pray today that we can continue to bless God by praying for those we love and those who need Jesus and need to know that he is our hope and salvation. Without him, I can't even begin to imagine where I would be today. In closing, there's an amazing new song out called The Blessing by Elevation Worship with Carrie Job and Cody Carnes. I can't play it for you today because of our limited licensing agreement, but it so adequately portrays my hope, my prayers, and my thoughts for all of you. Please look it up later if you haven't yet heard it. It is so profoundly powerful that I get emotional every time I hear it. It's based on scripture, and it's found at the end of Numbers chapter 6 in the Old Testament. And these are some of the lyrics. And would you please receive this benediction from me? The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you. In the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you. 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 God bless you all, my friends family, and church family, for now and forever. I love you. Well, thank you, Linda, for sharing with us this day. Um, that was sort of Linda's swan song, I guess you could say. Um, you know, um, I was remembering, as Linda was preparing this message, uh, an experience we had at our previous place at the lake that got torn down and hauled away in a dump truck. But back in the years, many years ago, we had a problem with the joists, the floor joists under the porch. And somebody helped us fix those by creating what they called sister joists. If you're familiar with that, you bring along some more wood and you put it alongside the sagging joists and the, the floor stopped sagging. Well, over these 40 years, Linda has been not only my wife, but my sister Joyce, if you will, that she has been there to support me and help me when I would sag, and I really appreciate uh, her role in my life. Uh, what a way to celebrate our 40th, huh? I just uh, uh, was remembering also on a few occasions when I've been with a bunch of men on a ministry team, we refer to our wives when we say, that we married up. Well, I certainly married up, and I'm thankful for 
Linda over these 40 years. Uh, Linda, in her message today, invited you to pray a prayer of acceptance. And if you did that, and um, if, you, if you took the time to download the Let's Connect card, on the card it says, I am deciding today to become a believer and follow Jesus Christ, or I am recommitting my life today to follow Jesus. And if you... Uh, Fill that card out, and I think you can do it electronically, or you can just let us know. That's the big thing. I would like to know and celebrate that with you if you made that your prayer today, much like Lydia did a couple thousand years ago. It is my privilege to share with you this day Holy Communion, and I'm going to begin by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 23. Paul says, I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. Again, he, he said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A person ought to examine himself before eating of the bread and drinking of the cup. So I would invite you now to take bread with that ever form you have with you and your household and to take a piece of that bread and to partake of the cup, either by dipping the bread in the cup or if you're at home, drinking from the cup. And uh, remember the words of the early church in their prayer as they said, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let us now participate in Holy Communion. We thank you, God, that we can share your presence in our lives with the bread and the cup. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Bill, and thank you, Linda, for sharing that beautiful message from your heart about how God has worked in your life and what he's taught you because you opened your heart to him. Well, we want to remind you as we begin to wrap up today that we are so blessed that all of you have joined us for worship. We do have one last song of praise to sing together, and this song is really a declaration that we will trust in our God who is faithful to us, who is for us, who is with us. No matter what we're facing, no matter where he leads us, no matter what he calls us to, we will trust him because he is faithful and because he is good and he is for us. So let's declare that we will trust him together as we wrap up today. Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I've tried to win this war, I confess My hands are weary, I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side when you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. You know what tomorrow brings There's not a day ahead you have not seen 
So in all things be my life and breath I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you I will trust in you You are my strength and comfort You are my steady hand You are my firm foundation The rock on which I stand Your ways are always higher Your plans are always good There's not a place where I'll go You've not already stood When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers As I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust I will trust in you 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 God bless you all and have a blessed week.